Good morning, everybody. Um, my name's Ted with Foxhole Homes, and right now we're gonna do a quick class on bottle bricks. I wanna walk you through um, what we're doing and why we use those. Um, of course, as much as we can, we build the earthships out of recycled or repurposed materials. We're taking materials and, uh, and reusing them um, as best we can. And so in this instance, we're gonna be taking uh, bottles and we're gonna be using them to make kind of stained glass walls. Those serve two different purposes. One is certainly to let light in the building and they look beautiful, but the other is because they actually become a significant part of the heating system in the house. If you've ever been, uh, if you've ever walked by a brick wall that's in the sun or a rock wall that's in the sun, right? The side that's in the sun, how does it feel? Hot, Hot right? Have you ever walked around to the other side of the wall and touched it? What's going on over there? Hot or not? No. Yeah, not, right? Because there's so much mass in that wall, the sun heats up the side that's in the sun, but the inside of the wall doesn't get very warm at all. And we want to, in the earth ships, we want to be able to transfer that sun energy from the outside of a wall to the inside of the wall and actually use that, that wall to store heat and then transmit it to the inside of the house. And so we do that with these bottle bricks, right? So I take I'm gonna take two bottles that are matched in diameter and I'm gonna cut four inches off of them so that I end up with two pieces that I can then kind of clean up and tape together. And then that allows me to put them in the wall so that as the sun shines through the outside, the radiant energy, the energy of the sun is actually transferring to any place where this glass is. And it allows us to take the energy of the sun from the outside of the wall and move it to the inside of the house and store it for a slower release through the night into the interior of the house. So it provides light, but it also becomes a significant part of the heating system of the house. So I wanna walk through some basic principles of this. And you guys have already done a bunch of this right now. The first thing that I've gotta do is I've gotta find bottles that match in diameter. And usually what I wanna do is at least on one side, the side that will go on the outside of the wall, I want that to be clear. And then the other side can be whatever color I wanna see um, on the inside. There's lots of different ways that you can do that. Um, some ways that look good are to do like swaths of different color, or colors that are the same and kind of have them match and you can do swirls and all kinds of stuff. Or you can actually lay out a full mosaic um, for, for the design. But once I get a, a set of them, then I'm going to use a, t a standard tile saw that I have set a guide on so that it is four inches so that my bottle brick will be eight inches tall overall, All right? Um, let's talk about some safety stuff really quick for this. Absolutely have on eye protection as you're doing this. A piece of glass in your eye is, is uh, kind of, well, let's just say, eyes don't grow back very well, right? So if those, you know, fingers, yeah, right, you know, they'll heal, but eyeballs, not so much, right? So make sure that you're protecting your eyes. Um, I like to wear heavy duty rubber gloves with this. Safety note, typically you do not wear gloves with any spinning blade, right? <laughs> because it has the potential to grab that glove and yank it in. But because we're working with a diamond blade, right? There's not a whole lot to grab on there. So it's not the typical safety risk risk that it would be and because we've got all these little kind of we end up with little sh slivers of glass um, and so highly recommend wearing some rubber gloves as you go so i'm going to put on my safety gear turn on my wet saw and then i'm going to grab so i'm going to do this set of bottles real quick so i'm going to grab one bottle i'm going to set it up against the guide and slowly very slowly i am going to contact the blade and then as it goes through I'm gonna spin the blade, spin the bottle all right so I'm going I'm gonna spin the bottle, and no, it's not that kind of spin the bottle, right? I'm gonna spin the bottle on the blade, um, and I'm gonna have a half bottle. I'm gonna take the drop piece, and I'm just gonna put it in our recycling. Then I'm gonna rinse, rinse off that piece of bottle, and I'm just gonna set it in the sun, um, set it in the sun to dry. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other piece.
So I'm gonna let those sit out in the sun to dry. And then after I've got two that have been washed and dried, I'm just gonna take a piece of packing tape. Oh, sorry. Um, Hey, Nicholas, can you throw me some packing tape right over there? No, the clear stuff right there, All right? Perfect. All right. Always fun finding the end on these. All right, I'm gonna find a piece of, I'm gonna get, take a piece of packing tape, and sometimes it helps to have a friend, right? Um, sometimes it helps to have a friend do this, and then I'm going to simply tape my two bottles together And voila, I have a bottle brick that from the outside is going to let light in, but from the other side is gonna, is gonna, is gonna send some color into the interior of the house. Yeah, so, yeah, so, All right? So if you can see that, and so you start putting a bunch of those together in a wall and it makes a really, really dramatic effect and actually becomes a significant way to heat the building. Even in the tiny building that we're using, um, we will probably end up using over 2,000 of these, right? Um, so <laughs> takes a lot of bottles and moves them into the building for a purpose that's beautiful and practical, right? Any questions? What do you do with the leftovers? Take them to the recycling center, right? So um, there are other things that we can do with the leftovers that we may be tinkering with in the long term. Um, you can crush this stuff up and use it as aggregate in concrete countertops and then grind it down and you can have all this kind of glass and color coming up in the top. Um, that's a little, little higher end. Might be tinkering with that in the future in some of the homes, uh, but right now we're just recycling it. But there are some creative ways that you can upcycle those things as well. Um, so this is with a standard bottle. One other thing I want to touch on quickly um, is kind of some decorative bottles, right? So, so, so round bottles, right? I'm just matching the diameter. Square bottles, I can do the same thing, right? As long as the diameters are pretty close. Um, you know, I can do, you know, weird shaped bottles and those are going to look cool as they're coming out. But once in a while, I'm going to find a bottle that um, is really strange. Like this one's an octagon on the bottom, right? Um, and then, but it turns square as it goes along. So now what, now I'm gonna try to find something that I can match up, right? That I can match up with this one in order to make a really creative, I mean, cause that's gonna pop out, right? Or if I find a red bottle or, or something like that, that's really unusual. And so in this case, right? In this case, I've got this one that has an octagon and this little Patron bottle that's this tiny square, but I could line them up. Now I said you wanted to cut them four inches, right? Well, in this case, I might take this bottle that's tall, but I like the bottom of it because it's got the octagon and I could use two inches off of the Patron bottle and six inches off of this one and just adjust the, adjust the piece on my saw. And those are about, they're, they're close enough in their shape that I could match those two together um, to get something that's gonna give me an accent um, inside, the, inside the space as I go, just to create a little visual interest. Other questions? And uh, just real quick, this is just a standard wet saw, right? For, for cutting tile with, with a diamond blade. Um, that's, that's all we're using on there. Again, don't forget safety gear, especially eyeballs. You can use rubber gloves on this because um, even though it is a spinning blade that would usually say, I'm not gonna wear gloves, right? Um, with the diamond blade, it's not gonna grab and pull.